Okay, guys. It happens sometimes that on stream someone hops in and asks for a question. It happens all the time that I answer that question. But sometimes it happens that I spend a lot of time to answer that question in depth. So first, feel free to hop in on stream. I'm streaming now on Twitch and YouTube. If you want to ask me anything, I will be more than happy to answer. And here I think it was such an interesting talk about uh, mindset, emotions, playing to win, playing to perform, playing to learn, a lot of things around that. Uh, I felt that it was interesting enough to be posted by itself on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to end up doing these kind of talks, but with a more professional format. So for now, I'm just posting it as podcast kind of so uh, i hope you enjoyed that type of different content let me know down in the comments if you agree with what i said if you don't agree with some points or if you want to add anything feel free to drop a like a comment or a subscription if you want to support the channel thank you for being here Much love. <laughs>
Uh, for me, it's blame that helps me fix something. If I don't blame myself, I don't think there's an issue, so I don't try to fix it. Uh, if you manage to do that without without blaming yourself, it yeah, it could be better, you know. Of course, I try to improve myself, that's why I blame myself in the first place, but I feel like even if I did better, I still lose. Yeah, but who gives a shit? You're not playing to lose, Bloodseeker. That's, that's the issue. Now, fuck fun, bro, I wanna climb. Okay, nice. Yeah, if you wanna climb, stop, stop thinking about winning games or losing them. Like, okay, I think I have a short about it. I think that should be it. It's on their elo. Yeah, I was platinum. No, I'm good. Or uh, when I would get diamond, I would finally be a good player. Well, the thing is, the elo doesn't matter because it's actually completely dependent on the MMR, which matters more. So the MMR is like your hidden elo. So if you're silver and you have a, a platinum MMR, uh, you will gain way more. And by the way, when you say win or lose, you like the only difference between winning and losing is gaining elo and MMR. So that's why you think it's your games. And it's relevant here. You should focus more on your MMR than your elo. But the issue with these two things is that both elo and mmr first they're not completely in your control you cannot go in a league session and say i will gain elo or i will gain mmr because it depends on winning or losing if you win you win mmr if you lose you lose mmr that's it the thing is winning and losing is not fully in your control you might have inters afks terrible comps or just a bad game as you okay now let's look at part so two what actually matters is your knowledge and your capacity to play according to that knowledge let's call it performance knowledge and performance when you switch your focus from elo and mmr to knowledge and performance well first knowledge and performance are not only linked to your account you lose your account you keep them they cannot be manipulated by riot you saw with the implementation of emerald ring and the knowledge and the performance is fully in your control just think about it would you rather have fakers account Count with his elo and mmr or would you rather have fakers knowledge and ability to perform for me it's pretty clear i want his knowledge i want his performance and i can do coaching pro play boosting it was shaduk see you next time much love basically yes i talk about elo and mmr but that's what you're talking about you can say no no i don't care about elo mmr I just want to win like it's the same shit like the only thing that changed after a win or loss is like how much elo or mmr you won and that's it like no one gives a shit if you won or lost your game so you decide to give it importance but then do like you don't want to win bloodseeker you want to learn how to win that's what you want to do you want to be the best at winning games and even the best at winning games and you look at you you, you look here at ranked and, and you do top solo queue players and and you look at the very best well they would have lose streaks and they don't like question everything you know like it's just like it's part of the process like, yeah, this guy lost four games in a row, but he's the best in Europe at winning games. Still lost four games in a row. If he loses his mental here, like, it's not, it's not going to work, you know? But if he learns from those four games, like, how to even win more games, like, probably, like, yeah, it's just, it's just what you should do, you know? You're on your elo, you'll win 50, you'll lose 52, exceeding loss is important for your mental. SKT, T1 games are full of mistakes. Check, so you think that I would check Ranger's games and I will not find mistakes? Is that what you're saying? Well, then you have a knowledge issue. Now, then your issue is that you cannot find mistakes. So maybe you should consider coaching or, or something like this. Is it on Ukas or is it on, on another account on Twitch? So you want me to look at Ranger game and, and find a game where he makes zero mistakes? so he shouldn't like he has like zero reason to blame himself on stream like this game for example where he's already two and four and one i mean okay <laughs> i i can i can stop the review when, when i see a mistake you know you can do that that's that's what i do every morning by the way what are you talking about zero mistakes <laughs> he's late why is he late can check that bush. Bro gave a first blood to Nidalee. What are you talking about? Nidalee is enabled. I'll take HP. Why did I take this tenacity nice rune, by the way? He made a mistake in runes. The game starts with a mistake and then another one. He's telling that he took the wrong rune. So that's already something to learn. You play 100 games with the wrong rune and then you play 100 with the right rune, you're going to have better results. So learn something from that. You asked me... It's a better song by Lil Wayne last week. Lil Wayne, I'm me. What is he doing? What is he doing? Well, and now he's typing. And now he's late and now he gives first blood to Nidali. Terrible mistakes. And then like, so we, we could keep going, but there's mistakes like... Bro, like you need to understand League, you have... you have If you're a really good player, you have 80 to 90, like to even like 100 outputs per minute. 
every single of this output can be optimized every single one of them so there's nothing else to watch like if you're a ranger and, and you want to learn something from this game it's so easy one minute 15 you learn about okay i need to really check my runes every single time this guy has been playing challenger for nine years and he still makes runes mistakes like that's 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 pretty terrible so maybe he should like put a, a reminder somewhere like a, a post-it a note somewhere that okay look at my runes and then and then what does he do level one he's legit typing looking at chat and and just like twerking here around and look at that he's not even looking at the screen that's why he dies no yeah. so like if you play every single game and learn something from it imagine you play a thousand game you lose all of them and you learn something from it and then you go on a new account you're gonna out peak your peak like 700 lp if you if you care about that just a perfect example is your money <laughs> if you give first blood away but you just keep watching a while. well of course he, like of course he tries if he doesn't try he's just trolling so, so what so he made a big mistake like like even if he kills here i'm sure i'm sure like the trade pattern could have been better Okay, miss that CS, yes, it's a mistake. Good. Yeah. And if he tries and he, and he loses, who gives a shit? Again, Blue Ticker, you're not playing to win games. It doesn't make sense. Like, you're gonna be sad for games where, like, you did everything, or not everything right, because you never do everything right, but you're gonna be. Like, you just put your satisfaction. Like, okay, why does he queue on Aurelia W here? What does he Q now? If he waits, he kills her. And he doesn't die, and he doesn't give a kill to Aurelia. Why am I doing it like that? I... Now imagine he doesn't do that shit. Like, like, like I, I, I believe you, you know what the butterfly effect is. But if you give a first bot to an Italy and then you give an early kill to Aurelia, before 4 minutes, you give all of that, plus the assist, plus the XP. Greg has got uh, level 2 from first wave, actually, because of the XP he gave. But the game would have been completely different. So there's no point in looking at minute 7, 10, 15, etc. I know there's a coach that gives free coaching actually. And what he does, he says, I stop the review at the first mistake. Because then it doesn't matter if you look at the rest of it. Because if you didn't do that mistake, the game would be very different, you know. I agree, is it okay to be hypercritical when you outperform? Of course it is. Because, okay, you're outperforming someone that's bad. How happy should you be about that? Like, outperforming doesn't mean shit. You need to perform to the best of your capacity. You need to do the maximum possible with the amount of knowledge you have. And this is the way you're going to extend your knowledge. Because if you're not playing at the max amount of knowledge you have, you're not going to gather new knowledge. Or it's going to be very hard, very tough. You, you're not playing to beat your opponents. You're not playing to outperform. You're playing to perform like the, the best possible. Like who gives a shit about being better than this random guy that you're facing? Imagine you're anyone in this game, sub ADC top or mid, and you see your jungle giving the uh, giving the first ball like that. Of course you don't play, but it was a huge mistake that affected the whole game super hard. Especially on the Nidalee, like Nidalee with first blood. That's exactly what she wants. She's enabled. Yeah, but critically, just a way to focus a lot on improving, not focus on result. Yep, it I is. So that. you could do that in a positive way. My issue is that when I'm critical on myself, I hate myself. Like I hate myself for doing mistakes. You cannot hate. You can love yourself for doing mistakes and be like, oh, it's a good thing. Like I was not able to make perfect plays, etc. Like league, it's not about like outperforming. It's not about winning lane. It's not about about winning game. It's about at any given time, asking yourself that one question: What is the best play right now? And finding an answer, and applying the the answer, and and that's it on the loop. Did you fail to do that at any point during the game? Your bad. You have something. I mean, your bad. Your. I mean, it's good because now you have something to learn, focus on, and you learn. And the next time you see this pattern, you know what to do. You know how to fix it. You know what the right play is, and you keep improving as a player. Like legit, the difference between Ranger and and me, for example, like why is he so much better than me? It's because. Well, it's likely that he put more intensity for more games, but he played way more, but he lost way more games than me. He died more than me. He lost more than me. He trolled games more than me. He missed more CS than me. And that's that's why he, like, plus like this mistakes, plus intention and focus on them, makes him a better player than me. And that's that's it. Like he's not gifted. He's not, it's not like he doesn't have a, a, a more powerful brain. Like he just did what I'm doing, but he started in season two and started in season seven, you know. You also play for the results? No. I I don't agree if you do it you're doing it wrong and sometimes i do it but i'm doing it wrong you should not do it i don't agree with that blue seeker if someone comes down in your lane and runs it and you even though you are performing like yeah there is a negative person to play to improve and get their knowledge
intelligence skill. Again, you give a shit about the result when your goal is to climb. I mean, you go mental boom. Well, that's that's something that you need to work on then, Bootseeker. That's 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 your problem. That's that's the only problem you have is that you don't manage to be in the solo queue and, and learning process, etc., and not get mentally emotional and affected by short-term bad things that happen. And that's it. That's the only problem I see. Like if you say you also play for the result, I don't agree. If you just play to perform at any given play and you never look at your win rate mmr wins losses like the victory screen doesn't matter for you it's just like the end of the play and then you go into the next game and you just keep doing right place right place right place you do that for 10 years you're gonna get challenger you won't even know it and that's actually the fastest way to get challenger it's like not to give a shit about winning or losing you don't you don't dodge any game you play everything you you put your whole focus even when someone is throwing it's hard i know it's hard it's super hard to do and and everyone fails at doing them even like the best mentality players in this game some games they will they will break mental it's hard but that's then that's the focus how do we work on this i feel like jumping out the window sometimes should i get psychologists well the the best way to work on it is actually like to to work on it on every single other aspect of your life for example something that helped me plenty is my relationship with my girlfriend for example i learned a lot about emotions and actually before meeting my girlfriend i thought that emotions were something that was playing like was fighting against me and that needed to be contained and the the best form of human life would be actually not a human and a robot that is like just gathering information and playing like an algorithm you know but then i kind of learned with her through her that like we should embrace emotions and the best humans at performing are actually the ones that will take the best out of emotions both negative and positive actually so i've been accepting more of my emotions and letting them go through instead of trying to contain and, and restrain them for example uh, my work helped me as, a lot as well like for example like I, I used to be a salesman and when you're really 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 good salesman sometimes you're not going to be able to sell your product because you cannot sell anything to anyone and then i learned to find the limit between okay when should i be mad at myself for not being able to make the sale because i was not good enough in my arguments or i was not able to make the sale because you couldn't make the sale like you could be the best sales, salesman on earth like you cannot sell this thing to this guy at this given moment and i did that and i focused way more on this before focusing on league and at some point i realized oh shit it works on league as well some games i should be mad at myself for not being able to find like the, the victory if i'm playing for it if i'm playing to win because yeah you can you can go in the game and say yeah i'm gonna play to win i still don't think it's the right mindset anyway if you do that then you need to be able like to assess emotionally okay this was winnable if i played it perfect or this wasn't or well, then i focus on some other things but it's something that's like emotions and and the way you manage them it it it's, it's gonna be impactful on every single aspect of your life. Your work, your career, your relationship to others, your re relationship to yourself, like your relationship to your body, etc. That's why actually like to go for performance, I have a, a few things that are imposed by my coach, my performance coach. Every single morning at 6.30 a.m. or like 7.30, like between 6.30 and 7.30, depending on where I wake up, I go in a cold shower. I don't want to go in a cold shower, but I go in a cold shower and I learn to focus on my breath, to be in the moment and to go like across like things that I don't want to do, etc. In between every single game, I take a break. You might have seen it when you started typing. I was not here because that's my way of dealing with emotions. I, I clean myself from the last game so I can go with a fresh spirit with the next one, etc. So I think I think it's it's a never-ending process. You can always be better, and you are gonna have like ups and downs, etc. Like every learning process is not linear. It's actually like ups and downs. And you just if you want to get better at it, if it truly matters to you, and you think that you're not good enough, and you want to get better at it, because some people embrace this part of themselves, like they say, yeah, I I, I get mad really easily, but I get also really happy really easily, etc. And and it's part of their personality, and, and they like it. Good for them, you know. But if you think that it's a bad thing and and you want to get um yeah you 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 want to work on that etc well you need to focus on it it's just like big you want to get better at csing you need to focus on csing you want to get better at team fighting you, wanna, you need to put focus on team fights but the good thing with emotions is that it works at every single moment of the day you could just like at any given moment like put an alarm put random alarms during the day and think about like 
okay what's my emotion right now why do i live it am i okay is it negative is it negative for something that actually matters or is it something that was in my control if it was not like why, why should i even care etc or like even in the morning when you wake up like do i feel like waking waking up like do i not feel like waking up just because my body is actually tired and i'm not at the end of a cycle and i need to sleep better or it's because just like i'm in a bad mood because i'm anticipating this thing that might never happen during my day etc it's just like it's a never ending process and it's it's yeah it's something that you can do every hour of the day basically i might have given a bit of a too long of an answer but i feel like we could talk talk about this for thousands of hours plenty of things in life the process is more important than the final goal it helps not to know yourself it reads depending on how much focus you put on that because in stress you see how you react then you can adapt 100 agree with everything you said to do uh knowing how you function helps to be the best version of yourself you can yep well i'm happy that silver knight agrees because silver knight is pretty uh wise i know he's a wise man uh, it's good okay well again uh, i don't know if i can apply that on myself Maybe you can, again, I'm not saying it's the best way to do things. Like, it's just like, if you want to solve the problems that you talked about, that's how you solve them. And it's not easy, and maybe it's easier for me because, I don't know, maybe genetics and the way my brain is, is wired makes it easier for me to be able to control and manage and, and shut down my emotions, etc. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I don't give a shit. But I'm not saying that everyone should leave his life like me and should put that focus and everyone should go towards performance. Just like, if you want to, that's that's some parts of the process if you don't want to it's it's more than okay like you like it can be a strength to actually like live emotions fully and sometimes uh, like wanting to jump yourself out the window because the thing is for me it works in both ways so I'm, I'm able to contain negative emotions naturally maybe a bit more than than the average person i still like have games where i mold etc but I, I let them go through very easily like next game i can i can go with the fridge mindset etc most of the time but it works the opposite way so i have a hard time being actually like, very happy about happy events you know so maybe if you get really mad about about bad events you can get like maybe whenever you win you're like yeah etc and that's good because when i win i'm like yeah i won you know I don't think there is like a better or worse thing i think like yeah you, you decide what you think is the best and yeah if if, if, if you want to try my method i can help like i just did and if you don't well it's more than okay hey trogimo and great subject it's a participation you're a bit punk seeker but yeah i mean you already like the you're already doing some things really right you know like realizing that there is an issue and then that maybe someone can help you understand the issue better or provide you like some other perspectives on the issue that you have etc go 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 buddy it's a long way to be a better human oh it is and it's never ending you know i thought at some point that i i finished the game like i, I think it was a couple of years ago i was like yeah that's it like i'm done but actually actually i just started it's so hard i am a negative person if i win i give him a shit <laughs> if i lose it's like i could break the wall and punch the people around me <laughs> Well, I'm sure there is a way or multiple ways to find benefit in that i don't know yet i, I yeah but i'm sure there's some positive in being negative but maybe that's just my way of seeing things where i like to see positive in everything you know like it's kind of like the way you see it like if you're sick it means that well you're more prepared for the next sickness or you're gonna enjoy more not being sick etc so hating defeat is a great way to remove true 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 morning me trail I'm also hardcore critical myself so much that the question games i lost when i had four people going zero ten and like how could i win this yeah, that's the only issue of Bloodseeker. Change? How could I win this? Because there's no answer to that. And and it's gonna get even more frustrating. Change it to, how could I do better? That's it. And there's always an answer to that. And this way you find it, and you find the answer, and then you can go in the next game with having, like, focus on it. But yeah, of course, like, it's, it's a problem, for sure. Like, if you're thinking, how could I win this? And you can't win this. Well, you're gonna be frustrated, of course so so yeah how could i do better there's always a way always 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 and we saw it from ranger's game but this actually inspires me to actually like do a video talking about uh this whole thing but in depth and different things that works for different players because of course like the things that work for me might not work for you you know many many objectives like avoid next entry to take all minions in this way or let's take this shutdown helps to live it painful games oh yeah 100 percent and also, like, I don't know if you've read uh, Flow by Mikhail Sisko Sosononovich, uh, the book about, well, optimal performance. But yeah, he talks about this, that you cannot, like, be in the optimal performance and learn the most and enjoy the most and perform the most if you don't have, like, feedback, you know. And sometimes in League of Legends, well, you don't have instant or really good feedback from what you're doing. Or the feedback is going to be, like, sometimes you're going to have bad outcomes for good uh, plays that you made. And the opposite is true as well. So if you put your 
yourself like you decide to have the like your own feedbacks like for example yes i will go for like 50 cs at, at six minutes or or shit like that well then you facilitate the way you can get an optimal performance i mean that's that yeah that's not needed that's not necessary but yeah it does help like i mean anything could help if it works for you like for example for a long time what worked for me was trying to dehumanize uh the players that were in my team and that's why you see that i don't have the the names of the players i have the names of the champions in game i see zinzao camille etc and that was before that was in my robotic uh, arc when i thought that you, emotions should be like completely disabled and I should just be a program an algorithm uh, created to perform on league well since I, I realized that maybe actually emotions have a place and maybe the fact that I'm human and, and everyone else is human should be taken into account in the algorithm of like playing good games well, I still have the name of the champions appearing but I'm not I'm not trying to shut down anymore the fact that I'm playing with other humans so it used to work for me and now it doesn't work anymore because I changed my way of seeing like the world in general and performance in a more specific way so yeah try things look at i don't know watch videos coach curtis has some pretty good videos about it or watch videos that are completely unrelated to league and and see you have a lot of actually like pretty good self-help uh, self-help uh, youtubers or or books or whatever maybe you should get into stoicism maybe stoicism can help because for me like if you are more stoic you won't have these issues but you put a lot of focus on things that are you know, not in your control and well everyone suffers of that so so yeah all of that things and i realize now that something that has been tilting me a lot recently in my games it's actually when i'm I, i'm not sure about the limit of what is what is in my control or isn't uh for example you guys probably have seen it if you've been watching my streams recently like the the whole like chat issue that i have like i still don't know like how much chat should i do or 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 I sh like yeah should i actually use chat or not because i feel like maybe well if i use chat it can be a bit in my control what other people do because they can listen to my chatting but then they don't do it and then i'm like okay well where's the limit then and that's something that frustrates me because if i was completely like 100 certain that chat was useless well i would just not use chat and not be mad at, at them for not listening to my my typing you know i wouldn't even type but because the limit is very like maybe this guy listens to his team's uh chats a lot and this guy doesn't listen at them at, at all but i cannot know that before the game and that's something that frustrates me these days it's like okay i'm trying to be stoic but if i can't know what what is or isn't in my control well it's hard to be stoic you know i always want to turn chat off but then there's a situation where i have to turn it on i don't think that's ever true that you need to turn it on i mean you should never deafen you should be pinging and typing etc but i don't think there's any info that anyone here can give me that i cannot take for myself i mean of course it's going to be infinitely hard like to, to like for example track every single summoner etc but in theory you have it on your minimap like in theory you, you have you have everything you need in the game uh, if, if like like you shouldn't wait for way to tell you oh we need to play the poke and then we can engage and you're like oh yeah this guy is right no you should be the one understanding that this is the best play if it is and if it isn't well you don't want him to type that in your chat and have useless information you know uh, i don't think you ever like need to have chat mm, maybe that's just me but yeah that's that's the reason but i think okay it can help though the way i see it is like whenever someone uses chat for bad reasons or useless info or most likely they're gonna do it again so you mute one by one people whenever they have bad behavior in chat basically i think that's the best way to do it for example level three raptors level three top after raptor start are you gonna ping that the way prepares for the king well i mean if your jungler is starting on raptors you know that there is a way that he's gonna do three games into top like he's gonna be in a position to be three games into top you don't have to ping it, you just have to have the wave in a good spot by the way, by the time he's top. That's, that's all you need to do. And if you want to call him to do three games into top, well, you can still use chat. Like you, you can type in chat while having it muted, you know. As I said, like the best way is like, as long as they use it in a good way. Like for example, this is useful info, so my way I'm not going to mute him. But as soon as they give useless info... So can disable chat and type okay thanks yeah of course like, like what i under don't understand and ranger does it and i would never understand he deafens what's the point of deafening it means like you have so little control over yourself that you cannot even not type you need the the program to not allow you to type and i feel like well that's that's a big problem that's like very low self-control you know but uh but yeah like like yeah do, do, do it the way i 
the way you do it i think it's it's absolutely the best the only issue like sometimes i don't and i mute all like early because i know that even the first terrible thing that they will type will affect me and that's like accepting my weakness you know but it shouldn't so kind of work on that on parallel well that was it for today's talk i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did feel free to drop a like a comment or a subscription if you haven't already next video is gonna be tomorrow same time same place until then take care of yourselves guys good luck and have fun in game and in real life and with you next time peace much love bye bye